Hello! We wanted to give you some information about Maker Camp that's going to be held this summer at South Central Service Cooperative. My name's Anna Warner. I'm a K-12 Literacy Specialist. And I'm Joanne Womack and I'm a K-12 Technology Integrationist. So we wanted to share with you a little bit, little bit of information about Maker Camp and what is a maker space. So the first question we have is, are you a maker? Have you been on Pinterest? Have you shopped on Etsy or even sold items on Etsy? Do you like do-it-yourself shows, such as HGTV channel, Fixer Upper, cooking shows? Or do you like to make things and even make things out of recycled goods? Well, if so, then you are a maker. There is background and research on maker spaces. It's based on the work of Seymour Papert, and you see his picture there below. Another gentleman that's written a lot of, of works about makerspaces, STEM and STEAM, is Gary Steger, and he's pictured there on your right, and he's working with those young students. So the whole premise behind the maker movement is to equip future leaders with the necessary skills to power innovation and economic growth. We need students to be more than just proficient readers and writers. They have to be literate in all aspects, such as science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Another leader in the maker movement is Laura Fleming. She's a library media specialist in New, in New Jersey, and she's, she feels that the maker movement is all about moving from consumption to creation and turning knowledge into action. Let's talk a little bit about STEM versus STEAM. Chances are you've probably heard these words used before. Let's talk about what the differences are. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And our maker camp will involve more STEAM activities. But the premise behind STEM is that innovation, again, is not just exclusive to scientists, computer programmers, and engineers. It requires input from artists, designers, and creative problem solvers. So maker spaces are truly for everyone. Now, Aunt, now Joanne's going to walk you through what a maker space looks like. Okay, so a maker space can look like a, diff a lot of different things. There's no one hard and fast rule of ways to create a makerspace. You can have a whole room that's dedicated just to makerspaces, or you might have little bins that you pull out of the library and just have an impromptu makerspace anytime you get ready to do so, and then put it away when you need to do other things. Or you might have a mobile cart that you can drag into a room and or put it back in a closet only when you need to have it out. So there's no one real way that a maker space should look. There's no one model. It can it can it can be made to tailor to your needs. In school, some maker spaces are in classrooms it, or they may take up a section of the classroom or in a lot of schools we see maker spaces in libraries. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about makerspace stations and some of the items you may see in a makerspace station or in a makerspace. Um, and there's no rule for this either. You can start small and grow as you find funds or uh, get things donated. So here, papercraft. This is a really good way to start your makerspace. You can have paper and you can have markers. Uh, crayons, of course. Of course, you can also add LED lights and batteries with some kind of conductive material um, like tape, conductive tape, or um, conductive wire and stuff like that. So electric is another way, good way to start, to have felt and buttons and feathers. Um, and then also, again, with the LED lights, you can always add later on some of the Arduino aspects of it robotics that's a good thing to have in a makerspace because you can do a lot of things and you get to learn a lot of different uh things with that with like computer science it's a really good stem or steam activity makey makey is an inexpensive thing to put in your makerspace 
So I would say this is definitely an item you would want in your makerspace. And our students will be using Makey Makey throughout our camp. Okay, some other things you might see, but you don't necessarily have to have right of way, but you can always add a 3D printer, um, these little bits, some Arduinos, uh, coding robots. Um, basically, there's no hard and fast rule on this either. You can have whatever you like in there. And a makerspace doesn't necessarily have to have technology. But I think it's great to include both because we want to, again, integrate the sciences with the arts and other content areas. So we wanted to share with you a, a couple of examples of makerspaces in Arkansas schools. And you're going to see this hashtag as we post photos and information about Maker Camp. AR Kids Can Code. Did you know Arkansas leads the nation in creating computer science standards for grades K-8? And that Facebook recently gave Arkansas schools um, over a million dollars worth of virtual reality equipment. And it's all because our governor is leading the way in, in computer science. Okay, so here's an example of a maker space, and this is Lakeside High School in Hot Springs. We gr took a group of teachers there on a field trip. They actually have a gaming room off their library that has PlayStations and Wiis, and the students sign up during lunch, or they have a before or after school time they can play. And again, you see on the right, you'll see some examples of some robotics. Students can bring their own robotics tools and play with them or code them. I shouldn't say play. It is fun. It's like playing, but they're also coding. You can also do events in libraries like this. Uh, for instance, we did an Anne Frank day where we immersed the students in the culture that was during the Anne Frank time. We had food, we had interactive uh, games and um, things for them to touch. Um, it was a really good day. So here's an example of a STEM activity. This is with Kimmy Clift, who's the library media specialist at Sparkman. Um, the stu these are kindergarten, some of, some of the students pictured are kindergarten students, and they were given a select amount of materials, and they were given um, some requirements and some restraints or constraints, and they were told to build the tallest snowman, and it was up to them in a collaborative group setting to problem solve and determine how they would do that. Here you see um, Camden Fairview High School Library. We've worked with um, Gail Costin, who's a library media specialist there. And you see students, students experiencing Makey Makey in different ways, playing instruments, the piano, um, and even playing a game. Another example, again, is Makey Makey. And then a really neat tool that can be used in makerspaces or just in the classroom is a breakout EDU box. It's basically an escape room in a toolbox or a small box that has locks and children solve codes and puzzles um, to open the box and it can fit any content area. So let's talk about Maker Camp. So we're excited about Maker Camp. Yes, we are. Yes, and we're excited that you want to be a part of it. So what we're doing, our, our primary goal here at the co-op is to help teachers and support them in trying innovative practices in their classrooms. So we created this camp as the perfect blend where teachers can get hands-on experience trying out new techniques with students. And they have the time to think about it and process it outside of the regular classroom day. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of our camp. So remember, the camp is June 13th through 15th. We have actually been planning, of course, well ahead of time, and we will be working with the teachers on June 12th to finalize some things. We'll be at the South Central Service Co-op Annex building, which is at 400 Mall Road. It's across from the cemetery. Each child is going to get a t-shirt, and we're excited that they're also going to get a Makey Makey Go. So they'll learn how to use that at camp and be able to bring it home, as well as they'll be able to come home with any items that they make. So our day is going to look like this. When the students come in, we're going to have about an hour or so of a free make time. One of the rooms is going to be a makerspace, and they'll have a choice in what they would like to create and work on. 
Then we'll also have a structured STEAM activity during the day where they're going to work in a collaborative setting to build something. Of course, every day we'll have snacks. And on our last day of camp, June the 15th, we'll have a guest speaker. And then at 1130, each of you are invited to come and you'll have a chance to listen and see what the students have done. So we're really excited about Maker Camp and thank you for joining us on this journey this summer. We hope that it will grow. Please remember you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and please email us if you have any questions. Have a great day.